all, thanks so much. Welcome to the Halftime Report. I'm Scott Wapner, front and center this hour, the state of the tech trade. NASDAQ tracking for its sixth down week in the past seven. It's having a bad week. Investment committee debating where all of that goes from here. Netflix numbers are on deck, so this is an important afternoon. Joining me for the hour, Josh Brown, Liz Young, and Jim Labenthal. I'll take you to the markets. We have a nice little bounce today, uh, but we, we are going to zero in on tech. And NASDAQ's up a little less than one half of 1%. So, as I said, Josh, you got this streak down six of seven weeks for the NASDAQ. It's down 3% on the week. And here we have Netflix. And, you know, there are times when it feels like the market needs tech. This yeah. feels like one of those times. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I don't know how much help you're going to get. But if you actually look at some of the pullbacks that we've experienced over the last couple of years, even if they were minor pullbacks, in many cases, big tech earnings reports were the thing that put a stop to those declines. So if you were thinking of like, what is it? So we're, I mean, look, we're, we're not really that far off the highs. We're three straight yeah, trading 4%. days. We're three straight but, trading days know. below the 50-day, the which I think is what's getting people's attention. We've grown very spoiled. We've been up above that short-term moving average mm -hmm. pretty consistently all year. So that's getting people's attention. But if you were to make a list of, like, what are the catalysts that could get people interested in again on the buy side, I would say some blowout tech earnings would do the trick. Number one, they're really big index components. Number two, they're highly visible. Everyone's going to know it if and when it happens. Uh, and then number three, just spiritually, this is still the leadership group. I know there's been a broadening. I know there have been winners in other sectors. But at the end of the day, they still are the leadership stocks. They're still the generals. We want the generals standing upright on the battlefield, not lying down. So uh, yeah, I think we need some, some help from the tech names. I don't know how much we'll get, but definitely you're right about so, that. I mean, next Please. week is going to gonna get real, as I said, for stocks that the majority of the committee owns in bulk, right? I mean, Microsoft and Meta, Alphabet, you've got Alphabet. Um, you have some other positioning within this space, too. Do you, do you, are you concerned at all about the way that these stocks have traded of late at a time where I think the broadening trade is going to be questioned because of the backup in rates? No, I'm not really concerned about the way they've been trading. I think, obviously, the sore spot for most of us has been what we've seen with Apple. Uh, the good news is the expectations are not high for Apple. There are some big fundamental questions that I think will come out during the Q&A and the prepared remarks that have nothing to do with this quarter's numbers and everything to do with how management feels about these open questions. And we're talking about stuff like China. We're talking about stuff like reacceleration of growth possibly coming from the services side. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's just going to remain a tough stock. The others, though, I think all look great. Like, Meta looks fantastic technically. Uh, obviously, the fundamentals are, are hitting our, on all cylinders. Uh, Alphabet, even though in, in the news flow they continue to be embarrassed by uh, some of the actions of the employees. Outside of that, the fundamentals are terrific. And even when you think about Microsoft, there's not that much going on there um, in the headlines, but the stock looks great. So I'm not worried about the theme. I think these stocks will hold up well. But look, in every quarter, one of them shocks everybody. Maybe it's going to be Tesla this time again. I don't know. Uh, but I, I feel just generally speaking, investors are still going to run for, for those stocks every opportunity they get. Not really, Next week Jim is going to get real, as I said for stocks that the majority of the committee owns in bulk, right? I mean, Microsoft and Meta, Alphabet, you've got Alphabet. Um, you have some other positioning within this space, too. Do you, do you, are you concerned at all about the way that these stocks have traded of late at a time where I think the broadening trade is going to be questioned because of the backup in rates? No, I'm not really concerned about the way they've been trading. I think, obviously, the sore spot for most of us has been what we've seen with Apple. Uh, the good news is the expectations are not high for Apple. There are some big fundamental questions that I think will come out during the Q&A and the prepared remarks that have nothing to do with this quarter's numbers and everything to do with how management feels about these open questions. And we're talking about stuff like China. We're talking about stuff like reacceleration of growth possibly coming from the services side. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's just going to remain a tough stock. The others, though, I think all look great. Like, Meta looks fantastic technically. Uh, obviously, the fundamentals are, are hitting on all cylinders. 
Uh, Alphabet, even though in, in the news flow, they continue to be embarrassed by uh, some of the actions of the employees. Outside of that, the fundamentals are terrific. And even when you think about Microsoft, there's not that much going on there um, in the headlines, but the stock looks great. So I'm not worried about the theme. I think these stocks will hold up well. But look, in every quarter, one of them shocks everybody. Maybe it's going to be Tesla this time again. I don't know. Uh, but I, I feel, just generally speaking, investors are still going to run for, for those stocks every opportunity they get. I really, Jim, want to see your Microsoft next Thursday. Um, I feel, as by the way, the price target gets trimmed today slightly at Citi. They reiterate the buy. That's more important. But the target goes to 475 from 480. Um, and they're adjusting their estimates, they say, because of some slight uh, FX headwinds. But this is a stock that's gotten a lot of the benefit of the doubt. You know, this first mover advantage, so to speak, where, you know, they, they had this open AI investment. It catapulted the AI trade into the lexicon. And we've talked about it probably every single day in some respects since that happened. Um, NVIDIA is, has its own place, but I feel like Microsoft, they need to, I, I want to see what they deliver this quarter. You know <laughs> I know what I'm saying? I, We've given I, them I the do, benefit so. of the doubt. Let's get some meat, some more meat on the bone. So humor me for a second. You like to ask us questions. I just want to know, are you skeptical or are you saying there's a hidden gem here? No, not really. I just noted, I don't know, a couple weeks ago that if you, you know, it was Microsoft was crushing everybody and Alphabet was the one who missed the boat. And then I noted over the last 12 months, the stock performance between the two was neck and neck. Yeah. Sorry, you a, hit, know a hidden gem, it's the largest market cap in the world. <laughs> okay. It's 37 <laughs> times <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, but let, the I gem has been I, unhidden. <laughs> so here's, here's why fully I was, out in the open here's gem. why I was <laughs> asking <laughs> that way, just in terms of, let yeah, me I'm rephrase it. Uh, no, no, I'm no, not I, 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 I actually just wanted your opinion because I don't know if we're going higher or lower, Scott, in Microsoft. I don't know. He doesn't okay? either. Well, well, you know, <laughs> but he could have. Um, roughly 35 times forward earnings. Peg ratio, which is, of course, you know, what guys like me think about is, is that 35 times fairly priced? Look on NVIDIA, the peg ratio is 1.1 at roughly 35 times forward earnings. That's fairly priced. Microsoft, the peg ratio, price to earnings over growth of earnings, is 2.3. That's a little high. Is it nosebleed? No. We're gonna, you know, look, I'm I'm not going to worry about FX. You, you brought that up, and or you know the analysts did. Peg ratio is high, but it's not egregiously high. I just don't know where it goes well, from I mean, here. I think a lot. You're not going to hate on Microsoft's valuation. I'm not and, hating on. And it. wax it is, poetic about Amazon. What's the biggest? Uh, what's the biggest times right? forward? All right. Well, but wait a second. Wait a second. Peg ratio on Amazon is about 1.2. So. Look, I'm not hating on Microsoft. What I'm saying is I'm not adding to Microsoft today. I'm adding to Amazon. By the way, NVIDIA is looking tempting to add to. What's the biggest risk in the Microsoft quarter? Uh, what, like, what's the worst thing they could risk. give an indicate? Well, I mean, the worst no risk. risk is what? That there's some uh, actually. I, know. I was Kevin, just, just going to say. You know, Jim, <laughs> no, no Social risk media is ablaze right now when he said there's well, no, no risk. My question, uh, here's what I'm asking. Here's what I'm Not me, not Josh, not Liz. Because if I'm trading the stock ahead of the quarter, what I'm worried about, um, and I'm not, what I would be worried about is the commercialization effort of OpenAI is going slower than what the market is okay. hoping for. F uh, fine. Uh, how about if I agree with you that that is actually maybe even likely? It's too late. You already said otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> well, you already said what, there was right? no risk. Oh, that I, that me, would be a wait. major oh. problem. Well, okay, but this is where right? we differ. That goes to my benefit of the doubt comment. This is where we differ. I don't think it's major. I don't. I don't think that's something that if that happens, Josh, that people wake up in the morning and say, this is a crummy stock, man. I want to get rid of wait Microsoft. Who the heck Don't this? you think that we've talked about sort of looking down the AI highway and saying, okay, there are very few companies who seem to be monetizing it now. NVIDIA, mm -hmm. Microsoft we put at the top of that list as well. So if Josh's point comes to fruition and they're monetizing okay. it less okay. than the market yeah. had expected, yeah. Look, That's I don't, want, I don't want to be, wait, thank you, Josh. That's I don't a problem. Want to, I, I apologize. I didn't mean to appear blasé, but here's what I'm saying. Let me be more specific. The Accept Ford, your apology. Thank you. The Ford multiple is 32. I mean, let's not get freaked out. We're su super micro. You want to talk about something where there might be some risk to the downside? Uh, Microsoft, look, it's not just AI. You've got, obviously, the Windows franchise. You've got the gaming. You've got Azure, everything. Yeah, I know, it's but not the stock hasn't, it, it hasn't, its multiple hasn't expanded on. Look, I 
don't want to. I don't want to talk out. Of, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. But I need to reiterate: I'm not buying Microsoft today. I'm buying Amazon. I'm buying something else that we'll get to in a second. All right. All right? So I'm not coming okay. out here saying this is the greatest thing since Josh Brown. Well, that's fair. And that's a pretty high Speaking hurdle. Speaking of Josh Brown, uh, Alphabet price target <laughs> price target gets raised at Bernstein uh, Which ahead one? of earnings today. Which one? Um, Alphabet, Alphabet and yeah. Meta, but yeah. Alphabet, I come to you on Alphabet because you own it. Uh, Alphabet goes to 165 from 160. Been vocal, they say that the AI doomsday fears are overdone. But while recent investor confidence has ticked up, it's impossible to dismiss the terminal risk. Yeah, so Google's large language model is not great, but neither is anyone else's. So that whole fear about Alphabet being behind is, is now laughable. Now that in the real world, these LLMs have been out there, people are using them, they're building layers above them, they're incorporating them into existing software. We see it every day in financial services. We know it's happening in every vertical. There is no real advantage yet that's materialized, so that fairy tale about how Google is like not a player here or what or they're too far behind to catch up obviously is untrue the key thing to keep in mind here every one of the of the fang names every one of the mag 7 names has an advertising business all of them pretty much maybe with the exception of Nvidia um, but the advertising business at alphabet is the business I know they have an airplane hangar in California where they're attempting time travel, but 97% of this company's revenue is ad revenue. And you can see that in the share price of Meta and Alphabet, which are leading the market, and why the ad market is doing great. It's a huge change versus 2022 and early 23. A lot of the uncertainty around ad spend has gone away. And they have resumed taking share from traditional advertising platforms like print, like television, no offense. Um, and, and that is what the street is going to value the stock on. That's what they can actually deliver on. And the AI stuff is important, but it's not really going to disrupt the current ad story today. Kind of like Windows for Microsoft. <laughs> I'm on Windows right now. Why would you on Windows? What year is this? Can we talk about, <laughs> let's talk about Tesla as well today, yeah, because good. the stock did hit a new 52-week low. You know, look, some have removed it from the MAG-7, and the performance of the stock is probably justifiable that that's been done. It's down for its fifth straight day. We, of course, had a big debate on that stock yesterday with Bryn and Weiss, you know, one long, one short. Take a listen. The fundamentals deteriorating. We've, we've hit limit in terms of the EV adoption. They've got the oldest EV lineup in the industry globally. They've got 20% of their revenues coming from China. We've seen what China has done, okay? We've seen Apple move their supply chain to India. And they've got better relationships and longer standing relationships with the Chinese government. We've seen China. China is supporting their domestic producers that, by the way, make newer more richer in terms of the accessories, in terms of, of you know, basically even the, even, you know, the, the, um, the range. So of their cars than Tesla, Num that's number two. Number three, number three, we've seen Elon just tweet out, oh, no more prices, we're raising prices. He lied, they're cutting prices. What I wouldn't discount is Elon, is I think he's one of the most, you know, prolific innovators and engineers of our time with SpaceX, literally I think NASA would be defunded with what he's done with energy storage and EVs and then at Neuralink. Make no mistake, part of this valuation is based on sentiment and also valuations, margins and earnings expanding. So I see absolutely why Steve is short. I don't think he's gonna be short long-term. I think it's probably a trade, but I think longer time we will get some clarity and this will be over the next few months, a potentially good opportunity to add or buy to the position. All right, that's Brennan Weiss with differing views, obviously. This resonated. Uh, the social engagement we got on this debate was Went sort of over viral. the top. We live for uh, moments like this. So, but I wanted, that's why I wanted you guys to weigh in. As Deutsche Bank today downgrades it to hold, they cut the target to 123 from 189. This is from a formerly very bullish analyst. And they say earnings are going to be under pressure and free cash flow will be as well. Do you, do you have a take on, on this situation? So the stock, even after everything that's gone through in the last year, in a 60% drawdown-ish, uh, it's still up 770% over five years. And I am maybe the worst person to offer a take because I never owned it. I missed the entire uh, run higher. I just never understood it. I never understood why it was so popular. I understand the appeal of him. I understand it's not a car company, blah, blah, blah. It's electrical, whatever. I get all that. I'm not stupid. 
I just, but I missed it. I was wrong, 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 wrong. Just because it's now at a 60% drawdown though, I don't really change my mind. As to being short, I know Weiss's finger is on the trigger. He's watching it all day. That, that's great. For most people, shorting Tesla historically, it's like uh, never fight a land war in, in Asia. Like it's just like one of those unwritten rules. You just don't do it because of how quickly you can get your face ripped off if he sends the wrong tweet that people get excited about. So like I'm not a great authority on the stock in either direction. Uh, I do think being short the stock is playing with fire. I also don't think I want to be long the name given all of the drama surrounding I'm just going to go to the fundamental analysis here. Um, you, you just hit it, Josh, that people say this is not a car company. And quite often they put, point to things like full self-driving FSD. Now, I know this is not going to make me friends with the Tesla crowd, but it is just a car company. And full self-driving is just like any other innovation that has ever come out of the automotive industry. I don't care whether it's fuel injections or airbags. Somebody initiates it, a company starts it, and then other companies follow. That has been the story with Tesla, including including the whole electric vehicle market. They had the space to themselves. Now there's competition, both in electrical vehicles and also full self-driving. And you're trending. Good luck. But then you summarize this, yeah. and what you've got is a company, the last thing that the aficionados have said is, look at the margins on Tesla. They've been Ferrari-like. It's true. They have been Ferrari-like, and now they're coming down, and the estimates are coming down, and they're locked into a price war. That's not where you want to have a 45 times multiple. So if you look at just EV as a theme, if we pull this out broadly, yeah. I think a lot of what is happening in EV now is what we need to keep in mind, take notes for what might happen in AI going forward. The EV theme, everybody was so enthusiastic about it, it was going to change the car industry entirely. And it got too enthusiastic. And now we're pulling back. It's not as popular. You even have normal traditional car, car companies having trouble unloading their version of EVs. So the demand isn't quite there. Look at lithium prices this year down dramatically compared to an environment where all of commodities are up. So the demand just hasn't come through yet. We pulled it forward way too much. Tesla was the company that was supposed to be the leader, the innovator, and now it's feeling some of that pain. Yeah, I mean, that may be true for, you know, certain names that have gotten an AI bubble uh, or AI umbrella bump. Yep. Um, but not necessarily for the biggest players like the Microsofts and sure. the NVIDIAs and the Alphabets. Selling and software is even so Meta, much by the way, than which, selling which, cars. Even, even Meta, by the way, which has some headlines out um, regarding its latest version of its large language model and uh, the stock's up nearly 3%. We're gonna have more on this coming up in, in just a few minutes, but it goes to the point we were talking about earlier about the arms race that's taking place, those who think they have a leadership role, and the way that the market has perceived who is in the advanced stages of monetization and are rewarding them as such. Dude, if we had a debate in 1998, one year into the internet, uh -huh. who's, who's in the lead? Our candidates would have been Lycos, Excite, Ask Jeeves, Yep. and at home like we would have been literally debating like who has the most eyeballs now who has the better and google comes public in 2004 nobody talks about anything that took place between now and and so i don't look i don't think it's going to be some company no one's ever heard of because of how expensive it is to just get into the business it's like a hundred billion dollar table stake so i get that it's going to be one of the companies we talk about it's just too soon to crown anybody and I think you're seeing that reflected on Wall Street, where every month we decided somebody else. Maybe today it's Meta. Um, right. But so I, I, I like that, though, for investing. I like that it's murky and unclear, and we don't already know. And we don't have a stock selling at 500 times earnings because they definitively won. So we're going to have more, as I said, on that in just a moment, because it's uh, developing into an interesting story today, and we don't want to uh, let it let it go. We, we could have had perhaps, you know, some other stocks as our chart of the day. We chose Taiwan Semi today because there's been, mm. you know, after ASML, there's been a lot of talk this week about what's going to happen with the, what has been one of the best trades in the market, clearly, and that's the semis. Well, Taiwan Semi today is falling on earnings. There's some news on Micron. It does lead us to NVIDIA as well, which gets reiterated as its top pick, Josh, with a $1,100 target at Cowan. And that stock's been in correction territory, too. Do, do we need to worry about 
some of these these chip stocks, which month to date, Intel's down near 20 percent. AMD's off 13 and a half on semis, 13 and a half to the downside. NXP's weak. Skyworks, ASML, as I just mentioned, Lamb Research and then NVIDIA. So these stocks, you know, I don't know if it's a full trend reversal. Uh, you would look at those charts and, and be able to decipher that better than me. But how do you look at what's happening in this space? No, these are falling knives right now. And uh, NVIDIA is probably holding up better than most of the names in the group that I follow. Um, Taiwan Semi is 60 percent of global foundry revenue. There is no company doing anything in chips that doesn't deal with them in some way, shape or form. So if you're not paying attention to what they're telling you, I don't know what you're looking at. Here's what they're telling you. They lowered expectations for chip growth in 2024. They cited macroeconomic and geopolitical uncertainties as though there isn't ever, you know, those things. Um, but though they, they think that those things are weighing on end market demand. You need to remember every semiconductor company is cyclical in the end. That's number one. You might not believe there's a cycle anymore at some point. The, the reality will catch up and say, oh, yeah, no, there still is a cycle. That's one. Two. Uh, and market demand is all that matters. And frequently, chip companies will be the last to know. They'll be the last to know. They'll find out later than some of the other companies that are the, the consumers of their chips. So that's what we're dealing with here. They are echoing some of the same things we heard from ASML. How many more companies this important do you need to hear from to understand that maybe the expectations got ahead of the reality? If you Hello and welcome to Blue Cloud Trading. My name is George. That was the halftime report earlier today on Thursday, April 18th. It is currently almost 4 p.m. We're about to close. As you can see here, it's 3.57 as I'm recording this video. And uh, what we're going to do is take a look at some of the stocks that were discussed on the show. And uh, including all the Fab 7 here that you see and some of the semiconductor stocks. We'll take a look at the, the indices. And I'm going to create a second video later to cover the sectors as well as some of our subscribers' requests. So first, let's take a quick look and see how the markets are doing right now. As you can see, that when we had a nice move up this morning, it was looking very bullish, right? Price had gapped up here in the Dow, as you can see, and then it moved up. And then sometime around 11, you know, things started to take a a reversal, you know, started to reverse. And as you can see, it dropped, gave away all those gains, dropped under the closing uh, price from the prior day here, that red line that you see, and uh, got very close to it. And, you know, it was just up 0.04%. NASDAQ was up also around that time, dropped, closed down 0.51%. The S&P 500, same thing, dropped and closed down 0.24% and the Russell 2000 down 0.11. Now, if we look at these little boxes here, you can see that about 51% of the stocks were declining. 88.9% of the stocks that uh, are listed here were dropping. Okay, we're experiencing new lows and about 76% below their 50-day moving average. So that's pretty significant. Now, the majority are still above the 200-day moving average, but um, it's not looking you know, so positive in this short term. Uh, on the heat map, you can see that Google is up 0.66, Meta up 1.54. You can see there's a couple more minutes left. So they, these numbers are still moving, but pretty much they're going to close around where we are right now. NVIDIA was up 0.77. So was um, AMD. But a lot of the semiconductors were down. And uh, the utilities were up again. Healthcare plans up. UNH was up 2.96, and the insurance brokers were up again. So let's look at the stocks and take a look now and see what's going on. The Dow, we're looking at the daily chart. We are using the Ichimoku indicator. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, it's very simple. I know it looks complicated. There's a lot of lines here. I'll just let me take off the support and levels for a moment and just show you what the, what this is all about. It's essentially just... You know, this purple line that you see here, that's the 52 days, okay, 52 periods. Uh, the, the last 52 periods, the highs and lows divided by two. So we've dropped under that level now for five days. Um, the green line is the Tenkinson. You'll hear me talking about that. That's the highs and lows of the last nine periods. And the red line 
is the highs and lows of all these periods here for the last 26 periods divided by two. So we want, you know, for a uptrending market, all right, we want price to be above the cloud. That's the Ichimoku cloud. And that's the same. This light blue color here is the Senku Span A, by the way. That's the highs and lows of, of the Tenkinson and Kijinson divided by two. So that's an interesting, you know, concept right there. And what's interesting about, another interesting thing about this uh, indicator is projects 26 periods into the future. So those calculations that I just mentioned about the Senku Span A and Senku Span B, they project into the future, 26 periods. And um, there's also this one final part of the indicator, it's this white line that you see here. That is essentially just closing prices in a line form, and it's projected 26 periods into the past. So what you essentially want to see for bullish uptrends is price above the all the moving averages that you see here. You want the the uh, chiku span, this white line, the closing price is to be above the price. All right. And right now we don't have those things happening on the daily chart. You can see that the Chiku span, for example, had dropped under price back here um, on February 26th. So we kind of got um, some signals here. The first signal came in with the uh, with the Chiku span. And then progressively some other things happened, you know, price closing under both the Tenkinson and Kijinson, you know, up here. And then price, once that happened, you can see price has dropped significantly, came into the into the cloud and has dropped. Now, the same thing is happening in all the indices except for, let's look at the Russell 2000. It's happened in the Russell 2000. Again, uh, so, th so it's showing some bearish behavior here. We also broke through this low. All right, that's also very negative based on this candle, the 199.66 level. All right, and then on the Qs, we are on the very last level of support, the Senku Span B. It uh, dropped today 0.57%. Down below, you'll see I have another indicator, directional movement indicator. I've got it at a setting of nine. And what you'll see, what you'll notice is that the negative DI line is above the positive DI line. That's a negative situ you know, situation. You don't want that. Um, you also don't want this white line to be moving up when the negative DI line is above the positive DI line. That, that signifies momentum. So the, the momentum is coming into this market uh, on the downside. When the momentum indicator, the ADX is moving up and the green line is above the negative DI line, as you can see over here, right? You can expect price to continue to move up. So this is a really bad sign here. All of the, the crossover of the Tenkinson below the Kijinson is also a negative. And as you can see, we're about to, it looks like the Senku Span A here is gonna about to cross into the Kijinson. But we still have this one last level here of support for the Qs with the Ichimoku indicator. It did break through this low. The uptrend has been broken, as I mentioned in a prior video. Uh, so, you know, it's just uh, holding up barely here on this level how about the spy the spy is still inside the cloud it has not reached the synchro span b level yet but it's also in a downtrend as you can see it's closed now um under the 50351 level for two days in a row today it tried to come back up above it right this morning and then the, the sellers came in they no nope. they said no we're gonna take over we're gonna push the price down further that's what happened they have the upper hand right now, all right? So, and as you can see, it's you can see it here on this directional movement index as well. So let's look at some of the other stocks, the, the, you know, the main names that were discussed on the show. Um, Amazon, for example. You know, these have been the, the stocks that have showed the most strength, the majority of them, not all of them, as you'll see in a few moments. But today, a very negative thing happened for Amazon it was down 1.14%. Uh, you could see it It opened at around the same closing price as the prior day. Came, tried to come back up, tried to get above that Kijinson. Could not make it above, found resistance here at my 182.67 level and dropped. So this is not a bullish sign. No reason to be entering a long position in Amazon at this particular 
point, okay? What I would wait for is price to close above the Tenkinson. Once again, we need, we need to see that first. Microsoft, here we have, you know, four days now where we are under the Kijinson. It's broken into the cloud, looking bearish. Look at this on the, uh, down here below, directional movement index, ADX is moving up now, all right? It was flat yesterday, right, over here, but now it's gaining some steam and moving up. So my expect, now it will find some support probably around this level here, the low of this candle, uh, three, what is that level? It's uh, 398.39, let's put that in there. I take that back. We have some other levels here. We got It's always a good idea to, to find the lowest one. 397.21. Yeah, okay. That's the level we want to use. That's the, the correct um, candle that we should use as a pivot candle. All right. So we said the low there is uh, 397.21. Let's draw that in there. Let's get it exact. 397.21. We're going to change the color to a light red to signify the daily charts. If you see blue lines, that means uh, on my other charts, you'll that signifies weekly levels. So, yeah, we should expect to find some support at 397.21, which, by the way, would coincide with the Ichimoku cloud, right? See how right there, it's flat. So when you whenever you see the Ichimoku cloud um, flattening out. You know, that's a very strong level of support. As it's moving up, not so much. But when it starts flattening out, okay, expect to, to for price to, you know, t it tends to stall in a, in a section like that. All right, let's keep going with Meta here. Meta is uh, finding support. It was up 1.54%. Showed some strength. The ADX is not moving up like it is with those other stocks. And uh, it's finding some support, but it is under the Tenkets and Kijins. And I would want to wait, ideally, for price to get above the 530 level, that high. You know, we're not that far away from there. We're about, you know, if it gets above uh, the Tenkinson, you'll only be looking at another, well, about 5%. So that's what I'd be waiting to see. If it can break above 530, I don't expect that to be happening anytime soon. But you never know. All right, let's look at Google. Um, Google was up 0.35%, holding up. It's doing quite well, actually. Very strong uptrend. Look at the Kumo. This is the Ichimoku cloud here. It's moving up. It's thickening. And Kijinson is moving straight up. There's a lot of strength here. I like Google. Netflix is, um, but let's go back, hold on for a second. But we are under the Tenkinson. So you may want to wait until price closes above that green line there. Okay, Netflix um, is just kind of stagnant here. And you can see it with the ADX. It's whenever the ADX flattens out, it's just showing, you know, consolidation really. And that's what's happening with Netflix. It's under the moving averages, but above the cloud. NVIDIA, same thing here. Um, ooh, it looks like it might be popping up a little bit here. It's... Uh, but it's holding up above this 834.17 level, all right? So that was based on this candle here. And uh, as long as it stays above there, I'm still a holder in NVIDIA. Um, although I don't have any positions, but I'm just saying I would be holding until it, it breaks and closes under that level. Because once it does, it's more, more than likely to drop down further down to the bottom of the cloud. And then you're looking at about a 15% drop, okay? Apple is um, down again, 0.57%, but still holding up about above this final level of support of 165.61. Once it breaks through that level, you know, it's gonna, it's just gonna be probably stair-stepping its way down further. So it really needs to hold up here, as far as I'm concerned. Tesla, all right, this is, Remember I talked about this yesterday. I said, well, there was a tweezer bottom pattern that was forming and that we may get a bounce uh, from the 152.37 level. That didn't happen, right? 
Uh, in fact, price closed under. It opened under that level of 152.37. See how it came up a little bit and then dropped? So we are now essentially in a very, very weak place for uh, Tesla. If you guys are holding this position, uh, expect it to drop further. There's no levels of support that I can see over here down below. Uh, except for 101.81, that is about 40. Let's see here, 46 percent away. It could certainly stop somewhere in the midpoint here and turn around, but there's not a lot of positive news going on here with uh, with Tesla. So I would um, I would be exiting this particular stock if you were holding it. Uh, but then you should have been out of this a long, long time ago. The Ichimoku gave us those early signals of when to exit, right? So remember, you have an, an idea of a stock that you're interested in buying. Why not consult the indicator, right, to find out where it is um, as far as the Ichimoku indicator is concerned? Is it in an uptrend? Is it breaking through the cloud? These things are important. Um, okay, so that's Tesla. Now let's take a look at some of the stocks that were discussed on the show, Intel very weak dropping right like a knife down as uh, josh mentioned a lot of these stocks are dropping like a knife down 1.79 percent sales growth has been negative for intel it's more than likely to come all the way down to this level of around 32 dollars, which is another 8.6 percent potentially and you can see the adx is moving straight up so that's not good uh, micron technology you know, this is a stock I've mentioned that people should stay out of because of their negative profit margins, their negative sales growth. Well, it's turned down. It has at one support level here, the Kijinson. Um, but for the last, you know, five days now, price has been declining. It should find some support at the Kijinson. We'll see if that happens. Um, but it, notice what's happening over here. Uh, you, the negative DI line is crossing above for the first time above the green line. So it's the, it could be a, uh, a new drop if price closes under the Kijinson. And then we're looking at a potential drop of about 13%. Maybe it, would, it might find some support here at 102.22, maybe 9.9.5% where, where the high of this candle is, but it won't look good if it, if it closes under that level. SMCI, super microcomputer, has the Tenkinson has been under the Kijinson here for a little bit. You can see we price closed uh, the, I'm sorry, the Chiku span got under price at this on March 4th. So we had an early warning system here um, that things might start to change direction. Price got under the Tenkinson. You know, a lot of negative things happening here. We do have, a, it looks like we do have a level of support here and here. Um, but I don't know. It doesn't, it's not something I'd be holding on to personally. Their operating cash flow is negative still. And um, the stock was down 3.29%. Nothing bullish here. SMH is the ETF for semiconductors. So, you know, check it out. The ADX is moving up. Momentum is up to the downside with negative DI line above the positive DI line. And it broke through today. No, sorry. It broke through yesterday, the 212.82 level, as you can see right there. And it's, uh, it tried to come back up to it. The sellers pushed it further down. I expect it to drop more at this point. Um, TSM has created a spinning top, a negative spinning top. So we may get a bounce potentially on um, Friday if price can get above the high of that candle, which is 135.13. But I wouldn't be entering a long position because of prices within the cloud. And that's what, one of the rules is you don't want to be entering a long position when price is in the cloud or under these moving averages. Okay, never. All right, and uh, one more thing. If you guys like this software that I'm using, very easy to access it. If you go to my uh, YouTube homepage, Blue Cloud Trading, very first link 
tc2000.com slash download slash blue cloud trading. And there are, there's also links to Finviz. Right there, Finviz is the other program that I use, that one. So you can get both of those. And if you click on that, it will bring you to the page. You can enter your email. You can get a $25 coupon towards your service. And uh, you can find out about the pricing here by clicking on pricing. All right. I would recommend the gold or platinum. The silver service does not include fundamental information, fundamentals. You can also create alerts with the gold and platinum. You cannot create alerts with the silver. All right. And it's really easy, actually. I, you know, that's something I never showed you guys um, how to do. But I'll, I'll show you. How, basically, what you would do is just put your uh, your cursor over a specific level. Let's say I was going to use. Um, well, let, let's go to one that I, I actually want to put a, an alert on. Let's let's say we want to put one on Google, and uh, if price comes down to the one fifty three ninety eight level, you put your cursor there. You right click. You just set alert. You can basically monitor for up to a year or if you want it to be a shorter period of time okay we'll just make it like uh, one month you could put in a description uh, and then just hit okay alert created and that's it very simple and you can find all of your alerts in the alert console up here all right anyway um that's all guys if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe by the way like i said there's going to be a second video coming out where I'll be going over more, um, more stocks today. So look out for that one.